。OK， 好，今日咧啊，我哋個主題咧就 interview 劇啲啦嚇。咁咧誒，我哋。今日咧就會請咗個嘉賓，頭先都見到啦，都唔好意思啊，喺啲前面時咧都要鬧一鬧同學。咁咧、啊、希望借鬧一次嚇，因為跟住落嚟嘅時候咧，我希望唔使咧督住邊啲同學咧啊唔留心啊咁樣，因為今日嘅。內容好豐富同埋咧好有用嘅，因為 Dicky 咧係一個乜嘢嘅嘉賓呢？嚇？佢咧而家咧就係讀緊咧 Hong Kong U 嘅 Gap Man 咯。咁佢點樣入去讀 Hong Kong U 嘅呢？咁就係因為咧以前咧 A Level 咧有一個叫做誒呢、嗯這個 Early Admission Scheme， 即係咧拔尖計劃。咁就喺會考咧考得好好成績咧，咁咧就讀咗中六咧就可以直接入去，就唔使考 A Level 噶啦。佢當年咧應該可能佢價錢會多啲嘅。當年咧就有幾間。大專嘅好，你哋話神科啦嚇，都收佢嘅。咁啊，所以阿 Dicky 啊嘅 interview tip 咧喺大學咧係好好嘅。最尾佢就揀咗呢一科嚟讀。咁而家佢都仲係學生嚟嘅，咁讀緊 Year Five 啊。咁咧佢喺讀書嘅時期咧，即係讀緊、呃、中學嘅時候咧，已經好犀利噶啦。你睇下佢，佢咧就喺讀緊書嘅時候咧，已經 join 咗呢個 Junior Achievement。知唔知咩叫 Junior Achievement 啊？嗱，阿頭頭另一頭。係一個商校合作嘅一個誒計劃嚟嘅，咁學生咧就可以透過同一啲商業機構咧，就做一啲咧誒營商體驗嘅計劃，係嘛？咁佢咧就係嗰個年度嘅 CEO 嚟嘅，係啦。咁另外咧，佢就喺讀書嘅時候，即、就、係、是、中學啊講緊嚇，佢咧就已經咧有一個 job s h a d o w 即係咧就係影子計劃，就係、是、跟住一啲大人物咧去學佢哋嘅工作啊，或者同跟住佢哋咧，好似學師咁樣，佢跟個咩人呢？佢跟個匯豐銀行總行 Mark m c c a m b i e 嘅 CEO， 亦都跟過咧阿曾學成同埋梁家傑，咁啊都係喺啲 law firm 裏邊嘅。咁所以咧，其實佢除咗喺呢個大學裏邊 interview， 佢、呃、出色之外咧，可能因為佢可以做到呢啲 job s h a d o w 或者 CEO 咧，都係自己咧喺一啲職場上咧嘅面試咧好有經驗嘅，係啦，佢都係一個咧好嗯識得咧係、嗯當中咧點樣可以為到自己表現到嘅？咁我都希望幫同學咧嚟緊咧啊喺 Jupiter 你可能報大學嘅時候都要 interview 嘅，可能未必咁急，但係有啲同學可能已經啊、嗯、報咗其他嘅專上院校啊，或者咧啊、嗯、其他海外啊咁樣我都唔知啦嚇，咁都會有機會要 interview 嘅。咁所以咧今日咧就我哋俾嘅時間咧，阿 Dicky 咧就講講咧佢誒一啲體驗嚇。咁其實後咧個 link 㗎，咁咧今日唔知點解個 PowerPoint 咧播唔到，就係、是、一個 TVB 嘅。訪問嚟嘅對於佢，咁我都 recommend 同學咧可以去睇，咁我呢個 part 我擺喺 E class 嘅嚇，咁樣咯。好，咁我哋俾啲掌聲啊 ，Dicky 啊。Hello everyone,、um, I thank Miss Chow for the wonderful introduction,、uh, very generous indeed.、Um, but today the spotlight is really you because it is you who will be、uh, entering university.、Um, before anything,、uh, let me tell you something.、Um, The DSC you are studying for, when a university considers you, when they admit you, it takes about 60 to 70 percent for most subjects that you're interested in, such as commerce,、um, law, social science, arts. But then a significant 30 to 40 percent comes from your interview skills, and even so, it may count. The interview skills you have may count. Your your performance may count even as 100%. Why is that? Because the university will call a group of people, candidates with similar academic background or qualifications, and then they interview them and see which one they pick, so that your interview performance counts as 100%. So I want you to promise me and promise yourself that. This hour, we spend this hour with all our attention. And if you have any questions, just ask because it is you, your questions, who will make up most of this talk. It's not me. It is. It's not really what I prepared. But、uh, I want you to show me your real concerns, your real questions, your. Your feelings, your anger, your frustrations, your happiness, your goals and aspirations and dreams. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Chow.
Am I speaking too fast? No. People in the back? Yes? Yes. Great. Um, Now, while the PowerPoint is very prepared, an interview, the purpose of an interview is to rule out intellectual doubts. It's to rule out people who score high marks in exams, but cannot speak, but cannot communicate. That is the purpose. You may have heard of uh, a CUHK master who interviewed for a number of times who cannot get a job. Despite high qualifications, he cannot get a job because he may not possess the interview skills. Now, why is why are interview skills important to you? Not just for your university, but for your jobs. And some people may say, well, I, I don't need interviews for my jobs either. It's basic, um, I would say, etiquette. In the manner when you deal with people, when you come across new people, uh, these job interview skills um, come and play and guide your behavior so that you don't have to worry about whether you're dressed properly, whether you're speaking properly, whether you're handshaking properly. Now, in there are a number of skills that interviewers look for when they when they when they see you. And I've uh, compiled a list in descending order of importance. The first one is your attitude. It's, it's not really it's not really your technical skills, your language skills, how many languages can you speak, um, but your attitude. And then the second one is intrapersonal skills, how you deal with each other. The third one is interpersonal skills, it's how well you understand yourself. How well you understand yourself. How well do you understand Elaine, myself? How well do you understand Cindy myself? Right. How well do you understand yourself? And then there comes global vision, technical skills, language skills, how, how much experience do you have overseas? But they're down the list. They're down the list. They're not important. They're not so important as soft skills. Now before an interview, now we come to the part before the interview, you have to prepare a CV. Now, I won't be uh, talking about CV here, but then uh, you, I'm sure you can find a lot of samples on, on the internet. Um, I would recommend a photo on the interview uh, on the CV uh, because you know an interviewer will see a lot of people, <coughs> and then when they discuss your performance at the end of the day, if they if, if, if your CV has a photo, the traditionally CV CVs don't have photos, but but then um, I think for identification purpose for them to record you, uh, it's good to have a photo. And, and, and I, I think for your photo, you, you, it's, it's better that you don't dress in your school uniform because you, you, know, you, you won't be a, a uh, true life student anymore uh, for the university admission purpose. And then, now for overseas universities, particularly, they will ask you to prepare some kind of personal statement, statement of purpose. Um, if you apply for overseas university or if your local university ask you for that, now here, here are what I will I'll recommend. Uh, your personal statement, your personal statement uh, should be linguistically. You, you shouldn't use difficult words. You shouldn't use difficult words. Now, I know the words are too small here, so you, you, you can just listen. Um, check your grammar, don't repeat words and phrases. Um, always go under the word limit, because if they ask you to do 200 words, 300 words, always go under. 
never go above. Because people are not going to read uh, in such detail. Uh, stylistics will uh, preferably review your personality, tell people who you are, not what pose you hold in your secondary school life. But you're, not that you are head prefect, but what kind of head prefect you are. Uh, maybe you don't hold any school post, but then what kind of person you are. Uh, embrace failure, start with a failure. You can start your personal statement with your biggest failure in life, how you panic in your last piano exam, or, or how you fail in one public speaking experience. Start with that failure and evaluate. Now, most people start their personal statement or they fill their personal statement with successes, did that and that. But then, if you start with a failure, and then you admit that failure and, and tell people what you learn from it, uh, it will be a good start. And then uh, the rest, the rest of our people. Now, before the interview, there are some intellectual preparations that you can do. Read news, follow up the news. Uh, you're lucky that uh, the society now has a lot of debates going on. Occupy Central, uh, constitutional reform, welfare, relationship with the mainland, all that. Read news as much as possible. Secondly, find out as much as you can about the institutions you are applying. If you're applying for uh, Poly University, well, why is it Poly University? Uh, what was it before? Um, find out as much as you can. Ask your elders, ask your parents, ask your, ask your friends, ask the people from this school who've been to Poly U to tell you what Poly U is all about. Ask them what they think. Okay. And then, and then, it comes to the part about understanding yourself. Um, before the interview, you should really, I, I think you will have some time to prepare. You should find a corner and sit down and think to yourself these three questions. The first, what are my characteristics? What is, what is my character? Personality. Secondly, secondly how your past has, 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 has sort of contributed this personality. Am I a sporty person? Why am I a sporty person? Because my dad uh, encouraged me to, or, or, or because when I was young, my dad went marathon with me all the time. That is your past. And then the third question you should ask yourself is how this past and this personality make you the right person for this interview? Right? If you're applying to be a fashion designer, then your character, your characteristics should relate to this job and convince people why I am why I am suitable. If you're applying to be a lawyer in the, in the law program in the university, maybe you can say that you, you maybe you are linguistic and then you tell people why you're linguistic, why you are you are a language based person. And then uh, why why do you think that language is important? in the practice of study of the law. Now, this is the, the, the theme that I would call. And you have to make yourself a theme park, like Disneyland. When you go to Disneyland, you clearly remember it's a fairy tale based uh, theme, uh, theme park. When you go to Ocean Park, the theme is ocean. And when people see you, Cindy, Elaine, uh, they will think of a thing. Ah, ah, they will think of a thing. They will remember who you are and they will remember you. Okay? Now I need the visual aid, uh, mainly because uh, for the following part, uh, to show you the dress code. The dress code. Uh, I would wish to do away with the visual aid uh, and really try to engage with it. Now, the dress code, what you're going to dress. Um, universities interviews and job interviews, most of the time, uh, the, the, the dress code is formal. Now, what do you mean by formal? Uh, for girls, it's very difficult to understand. Uh, 
for boys, you go in, uh, you always go go for suit, you know, funerals, wedding, uh, job interviews. Right? Somebody dies, somebody marries you. You wear the same suit. But then, uh, for girls, when you go to dinner balls, when you go to interviews, it's all different. So um, the dress code is formal for girls. Um, it means that first of all, you should go for a suit. Formal means the suit. And a suit is that the upper garment, the upper part of your clothing, and the lower part of your clothing, they should be of the same material, color, and pattern. This is what, what it means to be a suit. Now, uh, if you see businesswomen down in Central, they don't wear a suit. Right? They wear different... Uh, normally, people in workplace don't wear a suit for work. But then for interview purposes, um, you, you wear the same uh, clothing. What are the colors? Rain, blue, black. And for girls, I prefer black. Uh, for, for boys, uh, you can go for gray and, and blue. But for, for girls, uh, for girls, it can look like uh, blue, except that you're very mature. Uh, doesn't look good. So black will be my preference. Um, is a girl. By the way, I, I, I've come here for the fifth time. I think. Fifth time yes. Since uh, you are in the year one. Since you, yes, yes. Each year I come and uh, I show the same girl. Color yes. <laughs> uh, tone. You can see uh, from far, uh, from far back. I tell you, it's black and and gray uh, in color. And then we'll analyze her. For the upper part, you can see that she dresses in, in uh, a jacket and a blouse, or what you call a candy, uh, or, or shirt, or shirt. It is, uh, neither, one is, uh, either one is okay. And then when you walk, unlike me, you should, button, you should uh, keep a button on, like this, on your waistline. Uh, but then I have to walk, I have to move a lot. So, uh, and for the lower part, I would prefer a skirt because boys wear trousers, right? You, you want to, an interviewer, an interviewer looks at a lot of people a day. So uh, if you go boring, wearing trousers, it's not so good. And then the length of the skirt, uh, it's very tempting, it's very tempting when you leave secondary school to go for short skirts, right? Um, and in universities, I see girls wearing skirts like this. Right, formal, formal skirts. Uh, While well, it looks attractive to me, uh, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that. Um, your, this, the, the length of your skirt should touch, us, should, touch us, should touch here, but your knee, right? It's just about the length of your uh, school dress. It's just about it. And then, uh, let's go for shoes, uh, gray and black, heel, but the, the heel, uh, you shouldn't go for high heels. Um, and then the toe, not too aggressive, not too dumb. The makeup, the makeup, light makeup. But if you, if you don't, if you don't wear any makeup, it's fine. It's fine. Your hair. Some girls, when they go to formal occasions, they wash your hair beforehand, and they don't dry it, okay? And they go to the MTR, and they hope the MTR train will sort of blow the hair and dry it. No, uh, prepare beforehand, uh, and, and, the, and the rule about your hair is it should be away from your face. It should be covering your 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 uh, uh, your should be covering your eyes, your eyebrows. Okay, uh, it's not really for friends gathering. It's for old people to look at you. Okay, and you know how old people look at you when they discipline mistress, or master here. Look at you, right? And the interesting thing is, most interviewers don't know you, and if you cover most part of your face, like important parts of your eyebrows and eyes which express yourself, right? 
your emotional expressions come from here. If you come with them, then people can't really remember you or see what you think. Okay? Okay. Uh, no accessories, no watch, no Hello Kitty watch, no Kulumi, uh, no Brita Kuma, that sort of uh, cartoons. A man suit. You see that. Bring the certificates, pick your, I think, five at most. I know you've compiled a, a box of certificates, your pianos, exam, your, your painting, your dancing class certificate. But then pick, just pick a few. Uh, most of the time you won't be using them because you won't be showing them. They won't, they won't be asking you to show them, but you can bring them. Some photos for filling out forms, passport photos, CVs, a pen for filling out forms too, so that you don't have to borrow. You are about arriving early. If they ask you to be there at 11, you should be there at 11, uh, 10.30. And then you can, you can tour the campus, help yourself, and then after 10 minutes, you can sort of walk in and tell the receptionist or secretary that you've arrived. Uh, and the, the, the thing about the rule about here, the, uh, the rule here is really not to, you should be there too early because you get nervous sitting alone, right? And, and if you arrive 20 minutes early, it's just right, just right. You won't get too nervous. And then, before you enter the interview room, before the, you enter the interview room, talk to each other. Talk to each other. Especially with your smile, with your sincerity, and with your interest to know each other. And the reason for doing that is to, is to ease the answer. Is to get everybody going. Is to, so that, not, so that everybody's not too nervous. Now the interviews I have experienced uh, for the law interview at Hong Kong U, um, I think there were seven of us, seven of us around. And all seven of us got into the program. For another batch of students, candidates, I think one or two get into the program. The reason why is because our whole group worked together and we were all friendly to each other and we worked out the given problem to us. Now, if you, if you work as a team, if you have the ability to make a team, then it will show your leadership, your interpersonal skills, and remember this is what interviews, uh, what an interview is all about. Okay, take a deep breath. We are about to enter the interview room, but before that, I will take questions. I'll take questions in the middle. Yes. Is there any questions that you would like to ask as long as the first part is yes. finished? Because the first part is about, is yes. about dressing. Tiffany. Tiffany. <laughs> yes. Let's give a big hand to Tiffany. Yes. Tiffany, are you in your class? Uh, sex C. Sex C. So how many classes do you have? Four. Four. Uh, sexy is what type of class? Math class. <laughs> Math. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So you mentioned that we have to wear shoes during the interview, yes. but then if I applied for a more artistic kind of faculty, do I have to wear such formal attire too? Yes. Uh, wonderful questions. Uh, the short answer is no. Short answer is no. The long answer is Whatever program you're applying for, you think of a successful person coming out of the program. If you're applying for fashion design in Poly U, then you will think of what a successful fashion designer at young age will wear for a television interview. So you wouldn't expect a lawyer suit, right? But you wouldn't expect some kind of casual wear that she may wear every day for, for work. Something stylistic, something a bit formal. And then you will get the picture. 
Now, I don't know uh, what, what, what kind of subject are you looking for. You're a math person, right? <laughs> what, are you applying for architect? Yes. Architecture, right? Ooh. Oh, I see. So math and art. Yes, so you, you can think of what an architect would wear, but I can tell you an architect pretty much wears suits as well. If they, if they are to go to interviews, uh, if they are to go to a t TV, uh, TVB interviews. So it so, uh, shouldn't be a big problem. Yes. Questions, questions. Remember, I said questions make up this talk. It's not really what I've prepared. Because what I've prepared, you can find out. Thank you. Can 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 yes. can they ask in Cantonese? Yes. 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 <laughs> so don't put if yourself you, too much pressure. Okay? If you want to test me, he can speak Cantonese. Yes. <laughs> I I think I conducted this talk in both languages uh, last year. Was kind of me. Yes, uh, but but mainly it depends on uh, my mood. Uh, <laughs> but then I realize that if I speak English, people pay attention. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yes, but you can see. He's a very We don't want. Yes, yes, yes. Questions. Okay. Tiffany, <laughs> you do have a best friend. <laughs> So what is the who who is the top in class? I uh, know a uh, top in the form. The top student in the form. <laughs> Any questions? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> Any questions? 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 Yes, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait here. Thank you. Do you think? Um, ah, uh, he first. Yes, yes. Uh, do you think my dress is long enough today? Yes, yes, I think it's important. How about the suit? I think it's a little bit. How about uh, the top? Uh, and... <laughs> now, this child wears extremely properly for a teacher. For a teacher uh, I think uh, extremely properly for a secondary school uh, teacher, but, but, but then if you go for lawyers uh, interview, except that you are applying for very senior positions, uh, that maybe you're a partner of a firm that you want to go to another firm to be a partner, you can wear everyday uh, clothing. But then if you are young, very young, fresh graduate, or if you're applying for law program in the university, uh, you go for a suit. But, but then uh, I, I think uh, this child wears very formal. The bottom, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, actually, I want to ask you... Uh, your name, uh, please. Uh, my name is uh, Loli Che. Yes. <laughs> So, it's actually my English name is actually, I guess I have two English names, so I gradually uh, tell English? people uh, because I, I have changed names uh, when I am applying for a uh, secondary school. But your old name is Um, Claudia, and then when I go to the secondary school, it's B, so it's kind of confusing. You have three names. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, actually I want to ask that what makes you so confident in uh, your dressing and how makes you so, uh, dress so mature? Because when I uh, my first look to you, I think you were actually about 40 something or actually... <laughs>
I think the key about confidence is you just have to tell yourself. You just have to tell yourself. You don't need others to tell you that you're good. When you apply for this program, when they see you, you are somewhat good already. And you should bear that in mind. So when you walk into the interview room, you already won uh, half of the battle, right? You've out-competed a, a lot of people. And that's where you're confident. You have to find evidence or find clues to be confident about. Now, as I speak, you can, you can realize that I can find a lot of traits of, of, of why you should be confident. Like, when they see you, you know, you've already won half of the battle. It's the mindset that you have to bear in mind. You always find evidence about how, how good you're doing already, but how good you still have to go. Okay? Um, and it's really an inside talk that uh, you carry out not just before the interview, but before your exam, perhaps, before your public exams, before your most important days, in your life, before you go to a, a job interview, before maybe you ask a boy to, uh, go, to go out, yes? It's, it's the inside talk that you have to calm yourself down and think about how good you are and how good you still want, uh, have, have to go. If you go through the process, gradually uh, you, you, you will be confident. Yes. You, you, you have to look for small things that that affirm and gives you confidence. Yes. Questions. Questions. <laughs> Questions. Yes, yes, yes. I, are you confident? No. Yes, Tiffany. Yes, Tiffany. <laughs> are you, I, I think you're asking on behalf of somebody. Okay. <laughs> Um, yes. So, if during the interview, the interviewer or someone said something, and I don't know how to answer it, like I don't, I don't really know about that topic that much, and do I just admit that I do not know much about this, or should I just love something or look stupid? Okay, uh, <laughs> Tiffany asks the perfect question: which, which, which opens up? for the next part of the talk that I have prepared. Yes. Uh, now we go, uh, as Tiffany introduced, we now go to what you can do during the interview, during the questions and answers sessions. Now, remember, when you walk into the interview room, be genuine. Be who you are. Be who you are despite that some of you have three names. Be who you are, okay? You know your identity. Sell yourself. Sell yourself a soft sell. And I'll share with you how the soft sells. The interview starts as soon as you walk in the door. Uh, as soon as you walk in the door, the, the very front gate of Hong Kong View. Because that says the, the tone and the atmosphere that when you walk in the in, into a big corporation, the interview starts as soon as you meet the secretary. It's not really the boss. Now, an interview, I would say, has three parts. Meeting for the first time, during question and answers, after questions and answers. Meeting for the first time is always good depending on the culture, however, to start with a handshake. With a handshake. When I go to global business, um, pro, the, the global business uh, program interview in UST, they always handshake. I don't know why. But then if you go to CHK, they don't sort of handshake. But then, the reason why I share with you how to do a proper handshake is because you may do it. You may do it depending on what people are doing. But then if they are doing, then you are doing it properly. The proper handshake, first of all, is not two-handed. Oh, like this. 
two handed. Um, you will see two handed handshake in some situations, like funerals, like death ceremonies. Someone dies, and you go to uh, ask after them. And then palm to palm, your palm is here, not fingers to fingers. This is fingers to fingers. Is 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 really an, an equal world where two sexes, two genders, they don't distinguish themselves by in, in the business world they don't distinguish themselves as boys and girls, they just do palm to palm handshake. Third, through the five palms, one palm, two palms, three palms, and then don't go forever. <laughs> don't go forever. Just five palms. Briefly introduce yourself, maintain eye contact, when you handshake, say your name, um, um, maybe some interesting fact about yourself, how you feel about the day, then it's good, then it's good. And then stand up to shake, stand up to shake, when people come before you, to handshake with you, stand up to, sh uh, to shake. Now the exercise now is to handshake with each other now. Yes, handshake with each other now. The person next to you. The person next to you. Yes. The person next to you. Yes, yes. Handshake. Handshake. Yes. Okay, come back. Extremely cool for the classes in the back. Uh, I noticed two things. First of all, you never do left handshakes, okay? <laughs> left handshakes. There is a story going back to the Stone Age where your left hand uh, doesn't hold your weapon and your right hand, uh, right hand holds your weapon and then if you handshake with your right hand, it means that you dropped your weapon. Uh, this is a story I, I hear. So never go for left handshake. Uh, the, second, the second thing that I notice is you have to give it some grip, okay? Some force. And then the force represents the confidence behind you. And you can, you can sort of make it up, uh, but give it a squeeze. Give it a squeeze. Okay. And check. Sitting properly. Sitting properly. Now, this is a typical uh, chair. Now, when you sit, First of all, girls bring, uh, they will bring bags, right? Don't put your bag on top of your lap. Okay, don't, never do that. Uh, put your bag gently aside your chair, uh, because if you put your bag on your lap, it indicates that you want to leave, or you're defending yourself of some sort, right? And you will play with your bag. Don't do that, don't do that. You'll play with the strings, you'll play with the accessories, with the atmosphere, little thing like that. Uh, sit forward. Sit forward, you don't lean on the back, don't slouch, don't slouch, okay, sit, sit up, uh, sit straight. During the Q&A, and Tiffany's interested. Now, first of all, self-introduction. They will ask you to introduce yourself. Now, about self-introduction, all I can say that you keep it to one. What is one? You keep it to one minute, and you keep it to one thing about yourself. One thing about yourself. If you are a badminton person, then you keep it to badminton only. Don't say that you are a badminton captain, a hat brief, a hat librarian, and then you go to hiking, and then you go to Europe this summer, and then you score high marks in mathematics, but sometimes also good in geography. People can't remember that you just stick to badminton. Alright, stick to badminton. But then it doesn't have to be so formal. It doesn't have to be a hobby. It doesn't have to be a it doesn't have to be a made up hobby. It doesn't have to be a hobby, it doesn't have to be an academic subject, it doesn't have to be your qualification. It can be something as abstract as a colour. I think I am a pink person. Colour pink. The reason why I am a pink person is I'm romantic. I'm romantic. <laughs> and then the story goes on. And then, remember, this is the part that you set your theme for yourself. 
you're a romantic person. How has your past has made you a romantic person? And why, why being a romantic person makes you the right person in, in, in the studies of the law? And then you go on to say, well, when I, when I go on to read judgments in the old time, especially about family law, I find romance and the destruction of romance. And I'm interested in this part of the law when I become a lawyer. Then you make up the whole story. Okay? So uh, when you hear that I'm a paid person, you don't think that I can sort of sort of uh, make the self introduction But then you go around, you prepare, and the people will be surprised by that. Now the paint story, I just made it up. Now, so keep it short. Keep it to one thing. Uh, when they ask questions, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Uh, smiling. Smiling uh, implies confidence. It, it doesn't give confidence. Uh, it, not only does it give confidence to others, but also it gives confidence to yourself. Think of a smiling baby. Think of a smiling baby. Make your eye contact all the time. Don't cross arms. Don't cross arms. Small movements like touching your hair, your ears. Don't do that because people can see you. Make sure that you bring clips, hair clips. All right. Keep your hair away from your face. Uh, don't don't play with it. Be conversational. You don't. It doesn't have to be a. Doesn't have to be. a sort of dreadful, boring, serious talk. It's not a press conference. It's really getting to know each other. Some humor. Laugh a bit. Yes. So the first, the first. Now Tiffany is now interested. Now the first. Um, tip. Now don't open this gun lock when you when you're really in trouble. Okay, this is the last resort. Now I, I'm going to give you some tip about how you tackle difficult questions. How you're going to tackle difficult questions. Now the first question is, what do you think of the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians? Now this question, this question, is, I recycle for five years, and it's still on the news. It's still on the news. I haven't changed this question since day one here, uh, since my first time here. Now, you may not know what Palestinians are, right? But you do know that there is a word conflict between some people, some sort of people. And assuming that you know nothing about Gaza, you know nothing about Israel, nothing, okay, nothing. Just know the word conflict. And then the first tip is make a general statement. Very general. This is the answer. Then you make. Instead of going into the specific conditions on the ground, I will make a general comment about human nature. Assuming that you don't have much time. For example, the last 30 seconds, then you can say that. It's true that people disagree most of the time because of mistrust, but I think negotiations should always prevail over force. <laughs> We should give the other time to have their story heard instead of suppressing them because that would trigger more mistrust. Now this answer I've recycled five years as it is still true and it will be still true for the rest of the century. Okay? I hope not, but, but they've been doing it for, for thousands of years. Now if you compare the general comments to the specific conditions on the ground, you can see some some sort of uh, corresponding value, right? Um, so you make a general comment, especially good, where you have nothing to say but time is running up. Then uh, you, you go on to, I would just make a quick remark or quick conclusion. Then people will say, ah, oh, you're making the point. Second tip. The question is, why do you go to Central Bank Hexing? Uh, some sort of difficult questions. And then you have some hidden agenda. Um, you may say, well, it's for comfort, of course. Uh, I don't want process. And then the, the, the interviewer will ask you, but it takes you only 10 minutes more by the MTR. Yes, but, and then you go to yes, but, 
it's bad to the environment, taxes, yes. And then you, you, you sort of run out of answers. Uh, this sort of answering pattern, the substance is about facts, about objective facts. The second tip I will give you is make a subjective emotional statement. Make a statement about how you feel. I call the same taxi driver for years. I know you personally. <laughs> it feels good to start every morning by talking to him. So it's not just taxi. Now this is some kind of blow water, but, but this is the example that you can modify, right? In, in the interview, they will ask you why you go to, go to Central by taxi, but then they will ask you some sort of difficult questions and ask you to justify a choice, right? They will ask you to justify a choice. And then after arguing facts with them, then you can wrap up, or if you don't want this discussion, you can just stop with this. You can stop with this. And people may agree, and even if they disagree, they can't really rebut. Uh, what you feel, except that uh, they have to do it very uh, impolitely. Third tip, what would you do if you have this and that difficulty? Now this applies, uh, your answer may, you, you may not know the answer, but then this applies to uh, a job interview. I believe I will solve this problem together with my team. This is a polite way in a job interview to say that you don't know the answer. Okay? Your weaknesses. Your weaknesses. Yes, I'm lazy. Now, there are two ways to answer this question. What about your weaknesses? What about your weaknesses? The first way to answer it is to fake a weakness. I am too hard work. I'm too focused at work. This is a backing up sort of answer. Now this may do. This may do. And people just don't buy it. Especially sophisticated interviewers or people who have experience. Now what I would prefer, and it's also a part of understanding yourself, is to say your true weakness. Say your true weakness. And this is the homework you have. This is the homework you have for the rest of your life. Is to ask yourself well, what, I'm, what I'm good at and what I'm weak at. My true weakness, maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm lazy. But then what, what, is, what is the good about being lazy? What is the bad about being lazy? What has it cost me in the past? And how it has shaped me into this Send it into this um, person. And then maybe your weakness is I'm not good at Good at not good at languages and it, it has cost me careers, jobs. But then I am I realize that I have this weakness and I'm doing this course. I'm going to Beijing to meet a boyfriend. Uh, to prove. To prove. You know the, the the quickest way to learn a foreign language is always to date. Ah, it's my computer. <laughs> um, so, so you do have a weakness, and you find a weakness, and and and, and sort of tell people how you've been dealing with it, and tell the true story. Any difficult questions? You can politely say, I don't know, but I will learn. Especially for, for, a, for a university interview, you, 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 will, you will be there to learn how to tackle architectural problems, how to tackle social work problems, okay? Other possible questions or topics. What do you expect to do in this program? Will you go on? Exchange you go overseas. Where and why? And they're not asking it because they want to fill out the form for you right away. They're not doing that. They are asking you because they want to see whether you 
where, where the, your thinking is logical, where the internet expresses yourself, if you want to see the Big Bang, you don't say you, go to, you, you want to go to France, right? So um, they want to see if you can put up a logical argument or a logical explanation of why you do that or why you don't do that. How would you compare CHK with HKU? What, what if both give you an offer to you? This is the this is the typical questions, or sometimes uh, the most typical questions uh, CHK would ask you, especially in the medical department. They they like to torture you with these questions, and you 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 can think of the answer to that. Your true answers and the diplomatic answers. Um, and, and the, the comment I will give this, this question is, uh, you always compare the universities and to say that which university is better than, uh, than the other in this area. For example, Hong Kong, you may have, may have a uh, longer history. But then CHK, uh, the campus is nicer. And uh, the facilities that, or the research labs there, may be bigger, maybe the equipment is, uh, is, is, is more advanced. You do some research and you compare the universities, you give both sides, you give both universities credit and discredit, and then you, you, you justify your choice. It doesn't have to be, uh, if CHK asks for this, then you go to CHK. If you have lunch with CY Learn, our honorable chief executive, who would you say to them? Uh, hang on. Is tertiary education compound, uh, should Tertiary education will be compulsory. Um, what do you expect to be when you graduate? What do you think are the good qualities of a successful doctor, engineer, accountant, teacher? Yes. During the interview, they at the end of it, uh, at the end of an interview, they usually ask you, "Well, do you have any questions for us?" Any questions for us? And the answer. I think, yes, you should have some questions. Remember, an interview is an interview. It's an interview. You are viewing the other side. The other side is also viewing you. OK, you want to get to know each other. You want to know the company's culture. You want to know the university research. Uh, how is it doing? Uh, what is what is what is like to study here? But you don't go for factual questions like, how big is the campus here? How many? Uh, uh, is the canteen here cheap? Yes, you don't go for factual questions. Don't go for factual questions. And you prepare questions, and you also prepare the answer. You prepare the answer. What, maybe you can ask, what do you expect law faculty, the law faculty of Hong Kong, you to be in 10 years' time? And then they may, they may be lazy and not want to ask you, uh, answer you, and then they ask you back. And you should have a question, uh, uh, answer in mind. Well, I think the law uh, faculty having a focus in Chinese law in the English literature world should also explore other Asian law. Now, this is the, the questions that this is the answer that you prepare having done research about the law faculty of Hong Kong U. This is the answer that you can immediately give back if they ask you back. Okay. After Q and A. Say goodbye and handshake and just relax and enjoy your summer. Just relax. So you can send a thank you note. A thank you note in the form of an email to the professor, Professor Chang. Thank you for the interview. I enjoy it. I hope to see you in the coming uh, academic year. Just a very short note. It doesn't always help, but uh, I've heard that it. In some, in some interviews, a, a friend of mine who applies for a degree program from the associate degree program, uh, uh, the interviewer later tells him that uh, it's because of this thank you note that uh, the interviewer remembers him and, 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 and puts him through the admission. So sometimes it helps, but most of the time it, it doesn't. But it, 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 it anyway is a polite way to, to say thank you for giving me the time, the, in, uh, the attention, and relax, and you will be chosen. You will be chosen. By fate. By fate. Oh, so, questions. 
Questions? All right. Questions? Yes! Let's go. Your name is? Hi, I'm Beatrice Chan from 60. Lu Lucius? Beatrice. Why? That's a difficult name. What, what, what is it again? At Beatrice. B E A T R I C E. Mm, okay. Thanks. Um, um, you've mentioned that there, um, they'll give you a problem to solve with your team in yes. the interview. Can you maybe um, talk about it a yes, little bit more? Yes. Uh, what, what class are you in? At se um, 60, it's... Um, it's a math class? No, an elite class. And elite class? Different subjects. Yeah. I didn't know that. The, oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, Beatrice, right? Yes. Beatrice. Um, what program are you interested in? B-Law. Ah, oh, this is a... Yes. Okay, okay. Um, now, I was uh, specifically tailored by your answer to um, uh, BBA Law. Now, in BBA Law, or similar subjects like business, you can see that. Uh, similar business subjects, they will give you, for example, a business case. A business case. You are now acting for Apple. You are the product design team of Apple Incorporation. You are about to design the next product of Apple. What would you do? Discuss. This is as short as the question we can do. Yes? And then, and then the and, and then the, the time the timer goes on, uh, goes on, and you have to and then there is always a very short silence, and that's where you can jump in and be the leader, and be the leader. Now these sort of questions, um, these problem solving questions in a team, what you always what you you would always want to do is to listen to everybody to guide everybody, to guide everybody, to make some clarifications and definition in the beginning, but keep it short. Keep it short. Don't go for definitions of a product for five minutes. And then as you guide, now if you are a creative person, you can give your own idea. Uh, in fact, this is the question that I am given when I was in global business interview. And the, the answer I, I, I gave, because I, I just had an idea, uh, I would design an iCar. It's where people can live in and have all the electronics around them to help them with their life. And then when they get out of the car, they, uh, uh, they can have a long life, but, but then at night, when they come into the car, then they can sleep in, they can enjoy all the, all the Apple products that we have. So this is the answer I gave. Uh, you can be as creative as you want, but if you're not, if you don't have an idea at, the, at that time, then you lead, you guide, and then you, you, you watch closely to the timer, and you want to produce an answer. You always want to produce an answer. You, your, your job as a referee, as a, as, a, as a room keeper, is to make sure that the first part is about uh, guidance, about how this discussion is going forward, the middle part about the product, the end part is about summarizing, eliminating uh, products, and ask people, well, do you agree? Yes? Do you agree? Yes? Okay. Questions? What's your name? Tiffany. Tiffany again. No, no, you got to be giving others. Are you asked? Um, you got to be giving others to us. There's a question about your peers. There are two questions. Actually. Who? By who? One is from me. And, and then? One is... Do I have to answer this truthfully? Yes. <laughs> one is from my teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can answer on behalf of your teacher. Thank you. Yes. So, um, the first one is actually... Actually, I was not really that truthful about my aspiration because I want to study law for my first choice, and okay. you mentioned that there is an interview, but last time I went to Hong Kong you for the 
uh, open day talk, they told us something like, we don't do interviews anymore. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really confused. They, they may change. They may change, yes. Uh -huh. um, but I think that um, if you are good enough, it's most likely that you don't get an interview. But if you have some borderline cases, they may call a few persons. They don't do a large scale interview. But there are still chances that if you are borderline cases, you sort of get not too good results, not too bad. Then before you see which one of you having the same grace to be in the program. So uh, be prepared, still be prepared. Yes. And the second question is that if there is a panel of interviewers yes. instead of only one interviewer, it how can happens. I handle the, the whole panel? Oh, you just ignore them. Oh. Uh, whether you have one, you have three, if you have a group uh, question like which uh, was asking about, you ignore them. You discuss among uh, the peers, you don't report, uh, you don't discuss with the interviewers. They're here as, as if they are on CCTV. Okay? And, and they want to do it, they want to be invisible and see how you deal with pressure within a group. But then, if you have individual answers and response, then um, there will always be one who is assigned by them to ask questions, and the other two will take notes, and then you just talk to the one who is asking the questions. Yes. But most of the time, don't pay attention to the, to the professors. They, they give you, they give, their presence here gives you pressure. Questions, questions. Yes, name is. Are you a prefect? Um, yeah, five head prefect. Wow. Very high rank. Yeah, I'm, I'm Stephanie, and I want to know if we go for interviews and then when we encounter two aggressive or two ambitious teammates, yeah. what should we do? Just be ourselves or find another ways to show up ourselves? Um, is it an excellent Thank you. question, Stephanie? Uh, there are always some, some of these people who are very aggressive. And, and I think you can't be as aggressive as that because these people, they are born aggressive. They are born aggressive if you are talking about that type of people. Uh, my advice for you is you have to measure up. You have to sort of be a little bit more aggressive uh, than you are. Uh, because it's, uh, otherwise you don't have the air time. You don't have the air time and whatever good ideas you have you, you get shut down, and and I can I can assure you in that high pressure environment, and you have prepared. You always have some ideas, and don't be afraid to to say them. Don't be afraid to say them even in the first moment. There will be there will always be some short silences in between, or especially in the beginning. Don't be afraid, and if you take the lead, or take the lead some of the time, then uh, you, you you get the fair amount of. Uh, consideration by the judges. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry, thought is overrun. So I think we have to stop here. So if you want to ask further questions, you can contact Deki. Yeah. I have his contact, okay? Thank you, thank you. This is a very useful and beautiful talk. I think you can do something here in your coming interview. Yes. And may I uh, ask uh, Ms. Lam to present the souvenir for the kids, please?
you run back to your classroom, go have the second lesson. Okay. Oh, okay. And then. Um